Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zachly. Hope you're all having a fantastic day and let's not beat around the bush. This video is actually sponsored by none other than SeatGeek. If you're looking to tickets to any NBA game or any live event in general, then SeatGeek has you covered as they offer tickets just about any event at any venue that you could think of. And it's made even easier because when you use SeatGeek, you can get a view of the seats that you're interested in before you buy them. And also remember that you do get an additional $20 off your first order when you use the promo code SDC at checkout. So if going to a game or a live event such as a concert sounds like something that will be fun to you, I definitely recommend using SeatGeek. I'll have the link so you can download the app down in the description box below. All right, so guys, LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers, we all know that this hasn't been the season that they were hoping to have. The general consensus is that this has been a very disappointing season for LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers. And I know for the most part, a lot of you guys are most likely sick and tired of hearing about LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers because that's all the media has been talking about pretty much all season long. And I've been talking about them my fair share too. I can't even deny that. However, we do have a very important issue that we have to talk about today. As over the week, an LA-based physician who actually worked with LeBron James when he was going through his rehab from his injury that he sustained a couple of months back took to Instagram to post a picture of herself alongside LeBron James with the caption reading as follows. I want you all to know how bad that his injury was and is. The pain that he endured along with his amazing trainer Mike Mancias, he was on the court in six weeks when it should have been six months. Unselfishly, he endured pain, pain, pain. He did not want to let the Lakers down. The fans down, but I know what he went through. I learned about the determination, the will to win, how to get the job done. He is a force to be reckoned with. So essentially, she was saying that the pain LeBron James was going through was a lot greater than any of us ever could have imagined. That the rehab that should have taken six months, he decided to do in six weeks, even though once again, he probably should have been out for the rest of the season. That's essentially what this trainer is saying right here. And I should also note that just as quickly as this post was posted, it was also taken down. Now, the exact reason why she decided to take this down, only she and the people who might have told her to take it down know that's the truth that they have. And if you want to make speculations, you can, but it might not actually be what happened. Just remember that. As for why she might have felt the need to post this in the first place, well, I think it could have something to do with all of the false truths that have been being spread regarding LeBron James in the public media. Whenever the media talks about LeBron James, a lot of people like to make assumptions. We like to make assumptions as to what we think has been going on with LeBron, why LeBron and the Lakers haven't been playing so well in our opinion. And our opinions are assumptions that we make without actually knowing the truth as to what's going on becomes our truth. And we start spreading those truths to other people in which it then becomes their truth. When in reality, the truths that we were discovering, the truths that we were spewing were based upon our assumptions. So we were making false assumptions about something that we didn't know to fill in the pieces of the puzzle, thinking that it was the truth and spreading it as the truth when it was actually a lie. And that leads people like this who might know more of the truth that LeBron James is telling them to speak out and feel like they need to set the record straight. She needs to let people know that LeBron James was going through a lot and he's still going through a lot. He shouldn't have even been playing, but because of his love for the Lakers and his love for the fans and his urge to not to want to let them down, he decided to keep playing instead of sitting out like it would have been smarter or more selfish of him to do. And here's the thing, I myself am just as guilty of spreading these false truths or stating my opinions or my assumptions as if they are facts. When I assume that I might know something that I truly know nothing about, when I think I know what someone else is going through or what it is that they're thinking or why something isn't turning out the way that I assumed that it would, I spread my opinions as false truths, just like everyone else who might be doing similar things with their platforms. And for that, I am deeply sorry. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm sorry for spreading lies and speaking of things that I truly did not understand. And I guess the moral of this story is we should really learn all of the facts for what they are and accept the truth instead of just trying to assume 
and guess because we're too scared to look for the answers or we're too lazy to look for the answers or we just don't have the time or any excuses that we could make up to not know the answers for what it is that we truly know. The easiest thing is to assume that you know instead of actually finding out what it is that you don't know. And that's so dangerous because someone else who might not know listens to what you think that you know and then that becomes their truth. Well, once again, you were just assuming without actually knowing. So you're spreading lies. We're spreading lies and it's pretty much the end of that. You know, when you assume, pretty much just spreading lies. So there's been a lot of buzz surrounding Lonzo Ball and the big baller brand. Now it's been a while since we've talked about Lonzo Ball and the big baller brand. I think the last video I made about those two topics specifically was back when Lonzo Ball announced his first shoe and the outrageous, <laughs> absolutely outrageous, like, asinine price of the shoes that he was releasing. But anyways, we do have to talk about Lonzo Ball and the Big Baller brand once again, because we just got some very shocking news out. As reports came out over the weekend saying that Lonzo Ball has severed ties with BBB, the Big Baller brand, the company that was founded by Lonzo Ball and his father and his other two brothers. And according to the report that we got, the reason that Lonzo Ball decided to cut ties with BBB was because of a family friend, Alan Foster, who was also involved in their business. Los Angeles Lakers guard Lonzo Ball has severed ties with a co-founder of Big Baller brand over concern that the longtime family friend has a criminal past and has also not adequately accounted for the whereabouts of roughly one point five million from Ball's personal and business accounts. And the report later went on to say that Lonzo says he believes Alan Foster, who owns 16.3% of Big Baller brand, used his access to Lonzo's business and personal finances to enrich himself. And that because of that, he's decided to sever all ties with Alan effective immediately. AKA Lonzo Ball believes that Alan Foster stole 1.5 million dollars from him and that is why he's parting ways with both Allen and the big baller brand and Lonzo Ball even went as far as to remove all traces of BBB as well as even his father from his Instagram page like you can scroll all the way down you will see nothing BBB or LeVar Ball related on Lonzo's social media it's that deep now speaking of LeVar Ball and his role in all of this he's been saying that he's taking full responsibility for Lonzo Ball and what's happening to the big baller brand and the report also said that Lonzo Ball had been trying to warn LeVar about Allen for the longest time trying to express his concerns to LeVar in the past but LeVar didn't listen and this is what LeVar had has to say about this now. I've always believed in the best in people. Regretfully, I put my complete trust in Alan Foster to manage my son's business affairs. At the end of the day, family comes first. I support Zoe wholeheartedly. Together, we will make this right. As for Foster, the man being accused of stealing from Lonzo Ball, originally he did agree to do an interview with ESPN, but ever since then, the man has gone completely ghost. They did find out a little more about his past though, saying that in 2002, Foster was sentenced to more than seven years in prison after pleading guilty to mail fraud as well as money laundering, defrauding 70 investors that he used to have for around $4 million. And Lonzo ended off this saga by saying that this was very hard for him to come to terms to because Alan Foster was a guy that he looked up to, that he loved, and that he trusted. And him being stabbed in the back like this by someone like that, well, it, it hurts, but it did teach him that he has to be able to take responsibility of his own business, both off and on the basketball court. And that's where this story ends. No one is 100% sure of what's going to happen to the big baller brand now that Lonzo, who was the face of the brand pretty much, has parted ways. No one's quite sure as to what's going to happen between Lonzo and LaVar and how their relationship will progress moving forward. No one's 100% sure as to what the heck happened to that $1.5 million or what's going to happen to Alan Foster. But even though no one knows this stuff yet and we will only find out as time goes on I am curious to know what it is that you guys think about this situation what would you do if you are in Lonzo's position if you were just hurt so deeply by someone that you loved and trusted and they just stab you in the back like this or maybe you do have some life experience with maybe not you know the exact same situation where someone stole 1.5 million dollars from you but you do have an experience where you were stabbed
stabbed in the back and hurt deeply by someone that you loved, where you were betrayed. And if you feel comfortable with that, I definitely look forward to seeing your stories that you have to share down in the comment section below. And if you don't have anything like that, well, just put yourself in Lonzo Ball shoes and how would you feel if you were in this position? How would you be taking it? I'm really, really curious to see what you guys have to say about this down in the comment section below. Speaking of comments though, in the last video, we talked about how former OKC player Nick Collison had his jersey retired. And after he had his jersey retired, he talked about the possibility of Kevin Durant having his jersey retired by the OKC Thunder, saying that he would think that the OKC Thunder would retire his jersey, but ultimately that decision is going to be up to them. And after he said that, I asked you guys, how do you feel about this? Do you think that Kevin Durant should have his jersey retired by the OKC Thunder? And you guys had a lot to say. And we got over 500 responses to that video, and the response that we're talking about the Kevin Durant situation, we're definitely very split. There were people on both sides, and here's some of what you guys had to say. First up, we have Michael Gerarde, who says, Kevin Durant's the best player the OKC has ever had. He won MVP there. He led them to their only finals appearance so far, and so many deep playoff runs. Players have their jersey retired for far less than what KD has done for this organization. Then we have Jacob Thigpen saying, I'm an OKC fan, and I think his jersey should be retired. I was angry at first, but you move on. Now I can think fondly of a time when he was on the Thunder. And lastly, we have Emil Thors who says, Hi Zach, I'm an OKC Thunder fan from a while back. I think KD deserves to have his jersey retired since he has done so much for the team. But I also think that it'll be a difficult decision for the rest of the team to make since as you said, he left very abruptly. I am from Sweden, so English is not my native. Sorry for eventual language errors. Yo, Emil, shout out to you for watching from Sweden. That's freaking awesome to think that people are actually watching my videos in countries thousands and thousands of miles away on the other side of the world. That's insane. So, so definitely shout out to you for that. And by the way, your English, your English is fine. You ain't got nothing to worry about. As for the Kevin Durant situation, like I said, those who commented about this were very torn. We had people on both sides. Some people who might be thinking about the situation more logically, using their mind to think about it, saying, well, of course he should get his jersey retired. He's one of the best players that the OKC Thunder have ever had. However, some people feel with their emotions that Kevin Durant definitely did the organization wrong. And because of that, they have a certain disdain towards Kevin Durant and haven't quite forgiven him for what he did to the organization. And because of that, they don't think that he should have his jersey retired. And that's just the way they feel based upon the beliefs, the morals that they have. Either way you look at it though, the bottom line is it is going to come down to the organization. Now, personally, I can see both ways. I definitely can see why the organization would retire his jersey, and I hope that they do, because Kevin Durant, during his time in OKC, he gave it everything that he had for the organization. He went out and did his best for that team for years and years on end. Might not have resulted in a championship, but that doesn't negate the fact that he did try his best for the OKC Thunder. And for them not to retire his jersey someday, would mean that they don't acknowledge the work and the years that he put in there. And that because he left, he's pretty much dead to them. That's essentially the message that they would be saying, but that, that's the message that they want to give and that's on them. It's their decision to make. And that's where we're going to end off this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I hope you might have learned something from it or found it informative in one way or another. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel with post notifications turned on. I used to have a dream to get this channel over 1 million subscribers. I used to be really excited about that idea. And even though, I'm honestly very happy with where I am right now in life and all that I've been blessed with and fortunate enough to have to have you just here watching the video right now. That's great enough. It's no longer about my happiness as much as it is about completing something that I set out to do. Uh, my end goal for this channel is still to have it over 1 million subscribers. That's what I set out to do and I intend to follow that through. It's not a happiness thing is just following through with what I say that I'm going to do. With that being said though, that's enough of the talk. Hope you guys once again did enjoy the video. Thank you for watching and until next time, keep getting the buckets to my CC and I'm out of here. Peace.